Hello and welcome to the Mindful Men Podcast, a show inspiring men to be mindful about their lives. Each week, we'll dive into a range of topics that matter to men and hear from everyday people doing extraordinary things. So if you love the show, please give it a five-star rating and share it with your mates. Now, before we get into this week's episode, please note that some of the content may trigger you. And if this happens, please reach out to your support networks. It's really important. If you can't get enough of Mindful Men, head over to our website. It's www.mindful-men.com.au. Find the show notes and the links to our socials there. But for now, sit back, relax, and let's get mindful. G'day guys and welcome to another episode of the Mindful Men podcast. I'm your host Simon Rinney and today we're getting mindful about hope. Whenever we're faced with a life challenge, whether that's mental health, disability, finances, relationships, whatever it is, we can often get bogged down in the negativity of that challenge. We get sucked in to thinking it's never going to end, that it becomes insurmountable, that there isn't light at the end of the tunnel. But the truth is there is. We just can't see it. Sometimes our mind doesn't let us go there to see it either. And so we have to be reminded that there is hope. And someone who regularly reminds me of hope is a wonderful human being here on the Sunshine Coast, Kerry Atherton. Kerry has her own podcast, Stories of Hope, but also has mental health nights here on the Sunshine Coast where people come together to hear about different people's stories of challenge and triumph. And it instills hope in others, which is fantastic. And often Kerry defines hope as hold on, pain ends. So H, hold, ho, on, P, pain, E, ends. Hold on, pain ends. And it always has me reflecting this definition and acknowledging that it's so true. If we hold on for long enough, keep going through the motions, doing what we can, getting the support that we need, the pain, the challenge, the issue ultimately comes to a conclusion and we can move on. For some, that's easy. For many of us, it's really difficult. And for me particularly, it's really difficult because I'm a lived experience therapist. So when something comes in my brain, it goes around and around and around and around and around and around again and times that by 10. (laughs) It's not something that I can easily just slip out of, but I'm working on it. That's okay. And so I wanted to talk about hope this week because I had lost hope this week. My mental health hasn't been great. And there's been some reasons. I'm going to go into those reasons in a minute. But there's been a few things that have happened over six, maybe 12 months. They've all piled up and piled up and made me feel like I couldn't solve them anymore. I was trying to solve them, but no matter what I did, it just wasn't happening for me. And it all came to a tipping point this week after a phone conversation I had with someone and everything just became too much. My world crumbled down. All these balls that I was juggling which I'm about to go into, it felt like they all fell to the ground and I was hopeless. So I had a breakdown, done a lot of crying this week. I've been in therapy this week. But in the process of doing this and reflecting, I've started to see where the hope is. And I'm going to go through the challenge that I've gone through. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to go through what I'm doing to bring back hope. So stick around. You can hold on for me to get through the challenges because I will get to the hope part at the end of this episode. Quick overview of what's been going on. And there's some big things, like huge things. But in saying that, note that whatever I'm about to say doesn't mean that your stuff isn't big as well. It's really important to know that you could have something that doesn't seem as big as what Simon's about to talk about, but your stuff is just as important as well. So I'm only sharing this, A, with the idea of talking through what's going on helps me to process, but B, sharing with you some insights into hope and C, hopefully giving you something to go away with, to put in place in your life. And as part of that, we're normalizing discussions around mental health challenges. So this is why I'm doing it. And this is why you're here, because that's what we do in the Mindful Men podcast. So over the last six months, I'm not sure if I've talked about this. I probably have. My memory lapses <laughs> at the moment, but we have been in transition mode between houses. So six months ago, we put our house on the market thinking, yep, we can sell the house, buy a renovator, maybe reduce our mortgage, reduce the mortgage stress that we were under. And there might be a transition period. So we might sell a house in January, have February, maybe March in temporary accommodation, and then be moved into our new 
renovate a house. That didn't happen. And we're six months in, it's July now, and we still haven't moved out of the temporary accommodation. So what happened was, is we press approve on the person's contract that we accepted to buy our old house. And that very day, it seemed like that very day, all the other options that we had, the renovators that we'd been looking at, had all sold off or just dried up, disappeared. So there was nothing on the market. And weeks went on and there was nothing on the market. We did put an offer in on one or two houses and weren't accepted. And then nothing on the market. This repeated. Eventually something did come up and it's actually the house that we did eventually buy. And it's actually the house that we're moving into this week. So there is light at the end of this tunnel. But that took a long time to go through. We had a false start where the seller accepted our offer and then pulled out on advice of their lawyer. And then we circled back around a little bit later, a few weeks later or a month later. And this time she was all good to go. So that was positive, but it was very stressful. And then we had a long settlement period where we had to wait and wait and wait. And then we eventually got the keys and then we've been doing some renovations. So we're, we're fulfilling this need to renovate, which is awesome, but it's been stressful as well. Having trades coming in and out of the house, the never ending theme of painting. And that's where I'm going straight after recording this episode. I'm going back to the house to paint for what seems like the 10th day in a row. It's been stressful, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But for so long, I haven't seen that light. It just felt like this tunnel has never ended. And complicating that was that we had a really nice house before. Like we had a four bed, two bath, pool, backyard. The house was down the road from the kids' school. And we've been stuck in this three bedroom apartment for six months. We let that go. Now there's been some positives with the resort. We live across the road from the beach, which is fantastic. Great coffee nearby, great facilities, but it just hasn't felt like home. At least not to me. So I felt a bit out of whack for six months, just on housing alone. Then there's been some stuff with my wife. She was working in a corporate job and what started off as a really positive career move turned into one that was quite toxic. The workplace culture changed basically from day one that she was there. It wasn't what she expected. It wasn't the work that kind of she expected either. And she was lumped in with all this administrative things and management would tell her one thing and the next day tell her something different and then always come back to them and say, why is it taking so long to do your work? And in reality, it was management's issue for changing the goalposts all the time. But Rach, like she is, she just kept plugging away, trying to do her best and trying to satisfy management's needs. After almost two years of that, it came too much. The workplace culture went toxic, unrealistic workloads, rules for some and not for others, all impacted my wife. Now, over our journey together since 2008 was when we met, she has been an absolute rock. Mental health hasn't been a real issue in her life. Working at this place that she was working at changed all of that. So to see her go through what she went through from a mental health perspective, it just cut me deep. And I'm a therapist and I didn't know how to help. It's different when it's your clients compared to when it's your partner. It's very different. I did my best to help, but at the same time, I felt helpless. Add that to a heart condition that she has. So every year she goes to a cardiologist and gets it checked to make sure that it's okay with the idea that one day in the distant future, there'll be surgery to fix that. It's usually an old person problem. When I say old, I'm talking like old. It's not a some 30-year-old's problem, someone in their 30s. I think the stress of the last two years, coupled with children, you know, that's progressed things a little bit. But the stress of that workplace particularly has got to a point where we're now talking surgery. Now. She's not even 40 yet. Open heart surgery. This dropped on us a couple of weeks ago. And we're yet to have a meeting with the specialists about when, but it's scary. She's scared. I'm scared. What happens if something goes wrong? And so that's been adding to things. And then I, add, I guess I add the small business stuff as well. And small business is hard. Things this year haven't gone to plan as I had hoped. Even I'm two years in, I still feel like I've got a lot to learn about business and small business and managing businesses. But at the same time, I really am enjoying it, although it is a big drain on my mental well-being. 
which is interesting because I'm it's a therapy business, and so that I'm in the business of mental well being. But when it's your own mental well being, it's not just about showing up for clients; it's about all the stuff behind the scenes that you got to do. And I guess part of the fun of that is moving from sole trader, which I have been for the last two years, to a company structure. You know, we're hitting some good markers in terms of uh, income, which is fantastic. And this comes with having to set up a company. And the reason also for this is I want to bring on staff. So a little while ago, Rachel quit that corporate job, which was shit. And the idea was for her to come into Mindful Men and is to come into Mindful Men as a business manager, which is really awesome. Like she gets to step into the family business. She's always wanted to have a small business as well. No matter how hard she works, then she can get you know, rewarded for that, unlike her, all her other jobs. But the heart condition puts a big question mark on that. The surgery does. So here I was looking forward to Rach coming in and, and helping me out and growing the business. What happens if something goes wrong? How do I replace her income? Because that's what's happening at the moment. We're down to sole income. So that's a big stressor for me. At the same time, we're recruiting. So we've done a recruitment round and we're, we've interviewed people and now we're at the point of offering someone a job. And this is exciting because it means we're working towards being a national and then international brand for men's health and well-being. It's one of my goals. But I've also been hoping to rely on Rach for some of that and to think that she might be out of action for a while after open heart surgery. Like, that's scary. What happens if something goes wrong? I don't know. All these stresses have impacted my mental health. And, and you know, I've been living with mental health issues for a long time. And I should be used to it, but I'm never, you're never used to it. But with all these things coming on and, and I felt like I'm trying to hold the weight of the world on my shoulders. I'm trying to constantly problem solve, constantly looking for opportunities to do new things, to bring in multiple sources of income, to sustain Rachel, you know, to help her earn back the salary that she once had, to help the business grow, our family to grow, to move into this new house, all these things constantly in my brain going, 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 going. So it all came to a pointy bit this week when I broke down after a phone call from someone that didn't quite go to plan and the world became too much. All these things in my world became too much. And so it's just lucky that I um, had therapy this week, actually. After that phone call, I had to get in the car and go straight to therapy where I bawled my eyes out. Turns out as part of that therapy process, we're going through what's called financial trauma. So that's some trauma I've been holding on to and not dealing with for most of my life about different financial matters that have come and gone through my life as well. So when I'm going through these issues like the house, the financial component of buying a house, selling a house, renovating a house, my wife's heart condition, like the financial implications of that, my wife quitting a job, the financial implications of that, the business so moving to a company, that costs money. Recruiting costs money. What happens if everything goes wrong and I can't pay the person on recruiting money? What happens if everything goes wrong and I can't pay Rachel a wage? What happens if this all goes belly up? All these thoughts come into my mind and they get stuck there, like a negative loop. I'm sharing this because I want to reflect on it. And sharing and verbalizing these challenges gets it out of your head where it's been stuck in my head for a, quite a long time. And it helps us to then be able to start dissecting it and moving through it towards the light at the end of the tunnel. And so I'm doing this in this very moment. I'm reflecting in this moment on hope. And I'm telling myself to hold on because this pain will end. And hopefully you're starting to see that as well with whatever you're going through. So that's the challenges I've been going through in my brain just never ends and this is an ocd brain remember i have ocd and i used to drink to numb all this but these days i'm not i'm experiencing this without alcohol so here's what i'm doing to bring the hope back in and often i felt like there's no hope but here's what i'm doing this is my roadmap out check myself into therapy that was number one i've been seeing this coming for a little while and i found a therapist and i booked in and i go see them in fact, I've booked extra sessions because of where I'm at. I'm a lived experience therapist, which means I also engage in therapy. I go to therapy. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, everyone should probably go to therapy. I'm talking with someone. I bawled my eyes out on Monday with them. I rarely do that in therapy. Like 
I'm all for crying and all that, but I rarely do that in therapy. So for me to be doing that this Monday, all this stuff is really hurting me. That shows me that there's stuff inside of me that needs to come out. I'm reflecting on it with my therapist and I'm working towards recovery. So I'm rediscovering hope with different tools. So we're naming it. We're naming it to taming it. Great Jamie Usher quote there. I cried. As I said before, I bawled my eyes out. I let myself experience the waves of emotions coming up. I let myself experience them. Instead of bearing them, instead of putting the mask on and pretending they don't exist, I cried. I let it all out. In fact, I've done it multiple times this week by myself, with my therapist, with Rachel. I almost did it surfing this morning on the surfboard. And that's telling me that there's stuff there that I need to work through, that this is hurting, that I'm in pain. I also show up. I keep showing up. It would be too easy for me to just to cancel everything. In fact, I have canceled things that are not important, but I'm still showing up for my clients because they're important to me as well. And they also fill my cup. Providing therapy to my clients fills my cup. So that's actually a good thing. So I show up for them. I don't let it keep me down. They might ask me, how am I going? I was like, oh, I've been struggling a little bit, but let's focus on you. I let them have a little bit of insight into how I'm going because that also helps to normalize mental health discussions, as I said before. I'm constantly reflecting and I'm looking back at how far I've come. So all this financial stuff that's coming up for me, this financial trauma, actually the other night I looked at my numbers for the financial year and they were a lot better than I thought. I was focused on the negative stuff, but when I looked at it from a, a broader, bigger picture, I could see some lots of positives. So I'm like, maybe I am doing all right. Maybe I'm doing okay. Start to bring that self-compassion back in. I look at how far I've come over two years or even the last six months of all the things that I have been juggling. I felt like the world crashed down, but it didn't really. That was just in my mind. You know, that's what mental health does. It tricks us into thinking things are worse than they are. I'm also looking forward to the future with the right support. So I recognize what I need and who I need in my life, and I link them in. Therapist, supervisor, Rachel. I've got a wellness coach for business, other family members. I rang my mum last night to chat about a few things. I also look at my kids and remind myself that we are doing all this stuff for them. I have a small business to create financial time, creative freedom to be the best dad that I can be for my kids, to show them that we can create something special and thrive through it. And so I look at them and go, I'm doing this for you. We're moving house. We're renovating because it's an adventure for our family. We're doing it for them as well, not just for us, for them. As I said before, there's days when I don't feel hopeful, but I know myself that the pain will end. This is the rational thinking part of my brain coming back on because I'm starting to tune into things that can bring back the hope. I'm going through a lot right now, but I also know that I've been through much, much worse. And I know in the past that the pain of the past has ended. I've worked through it and I can do it again this time. That's my story about what's been going on and my reflection on hope. So I want you to take from this what you will. And know that, yes, I've talked about some really big things, but your stuff also matters. Please remember that. So if you're out there and you feel like hope is gone, just reflect on my story. Reflect on the definition of hope from Kerry. Hold on, pain ends. Know that you don't have to do this alone. Just ask for help. We don't have to fix everything ourselves. Ask people for help. Help can be a shoulder to cry on. Keep showing up. You getting out of bed is a really good thing. You might not feel like your best self, or I haven't felt like that this week, but just show up. Find the little moments of joy in those days. For me, it's meeting with my clients. It's great. I don't feel like going to work, but I do. Because when I'm there, I have a great time supporting men with mental health and disability. Also, look how far you've come. Whatever the challenge is, look at the start of the challenge to where you are today guarantee you're at least one percent better and you keep showing up which is growth you're not stagnant you're growing through this I also look forward to the future know that the light will come at the end of that tunnel hope is there build the hope cling on to it move through the motions keep showing up and you will eventually get there why because the pain ends you just need to hold on a lot to think about in today's episode around hope and if it has triggered you, please reach out to your mental health supports. Mindful Men is available for therapy Australia-wide. So, yeah, check out our new website as well, mindfulmen.com.au. Brand new website 
which talks about our therapy services, talks about the Mindful Men podcast, all the socials. Love to hear feedback on the website too. At the very least, just know that hope is there. Just got to tune back into it. But that's all for me today on the Mindful Men podcast. Until next time, stay mindful. Well, that's a wrap for today's episode and I hope you got some value from it. If anything triggered your mental health today, please reach out to your support networks. Also, if you loved what you heard, be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your mates. For more from Mindful Men, you can check us out on Instagram and YouTube and I'll throw the links to these pages in the show notes below. But until next time, stay mindful.